All right, I have returned. It is several days later, and uh, lots and lots and lots of. Seems like I must have drilled a thousand holes in this chassis to get all. You know, every little screw hole, every little socket, tube socket hole, every little thing you see is another hole you have to drill. And that's the most, to me, the most tedious part of building an amp from scratch is punching out the chassis. But it's all done and everything's installed and all the parts are wired in and we're ready to put some power to this and see what it does. Now, a couple things could happen. Um, number one, it could explode <laughs> um, and that's happened before. Number two, it could go into violent oscillation because I swapped the two pin 5 grids of the output tubes around and the feedback circuit um, will act like positive feedback instead of negative feedback and you know no matter how much I study it and do all this it always seems like the 50-50-90 rule kicks in with me and uh, you all know what the 50-50-90 rule is don't you? If there's a 50-50 chance of something 90% of the time you'll get the wrong 50% <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how it is with me. Anyways, um, I'm going to turn this on for the first time before all of you. Um, I'm actually lying a little bit. I did put power to this one time after I fitted the power supply module just to make sure that everything came up over here and I got high voltage, and I did. Um, I didn't even have the power cord at the time. I just kind of jumpered two clips on uh, very precariously and I did that off camera so I wouldn't scare y'all uh, but anyhow uh, it, it that part worked so I wired all this up I went over it three or four times to verify that it looks to be wired properly um, from all my guesses here my calculations and everything I think the component values that have been chosen in here should work but you never know when you're experimenting um, if the amps gonna have some oscillation or uh, you know something's not gonna work right but nevertheless um, it's ready for power so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna connect some meters um, I want to get um, I want to monitor the bias voltage across these bias dropping resistors here that for my bias monitoring I want to connect a 4 ohm dummy load to the speaker terminal which is right here. Uh, I want to plug it into my dim bulb. Um, I could come up really slow on a Variac but I would rather have the current limiting capabilities of the dim bulb and of course we could do the dim bulb and the Variac but that you know kinda gets ridiculous after a while. If something's going to short it's gonna go into the bulb so I'm gonna use my dim bulb for my first power up. Um, I'm, I've got the oscilloscope connected uh, as normal across the dummy load and I am going to add a 4 ohm resistor across the 8 ohm on my dummy load or an 8 ohm resistor across the 8 ohm of the dummy load so that I can actually get a 4 ohm load okay um, so we're gonna do that and then uh, I'm going to also monitor the voltage coming up on the DC rail and kind of be able to move around a little bit and check that um, and then I'll, last but not least I've got an AC voltmeter that I'm going to co connect across the output terminals to just to measure the output if we get to that point and we're going to put a signal generator in here so let's start off real slow I'm just going to check bias and check for power up uh, let me get my first connections done for that and then we'll be right back all right, so we're hooked up. Let me pull the camera off of the stand here for a second and just kind of give you an idea of how it looks. Um, the amp's sitting right side up, actually. <laughs> but you can see there I have the tube sockets all mounted up, and I did put these, you know, the keepers on this. Um, isn't this cute? I got the tube shields are red, of course, this anodized finish uh, most likely will not make good contact so I'm gonna probably inside there sand 
these little where these little tips stick out these little bumps I'm gonna go ahead and you know you can see them under there I'm gonna sand those off eventually the other thing is I have an elect I have a tongue saw 12 ax 7 for the input tube and the tongue saws are if you notice physically bigger diameter than a standard 12 ax 7 so they always don't quite fit in there so I had to like slit these on the side so they'll open just a hair the shield part fits right over them but it's something you might want to keep in mind if you're going to use the tongue saw the new tongue saw release tubes um, they are a bigger diameter than a standard 12 AX7 so we have our fuse socket in there we have a, a little retro looking power cord but it does have a regular plug on the end three prong uh, have our speaker jack, have our input jack, uh, just giving you the nickel tour here. Uh, the bias pot is mounted right here up front where we can actually get to it. And I may put even a little test point from these up here so we don't have to take the amp out of the chassis to, to measure uh, and adjust the bias. Um, you saw all this before and you can kind of see how I have everything star grounded to one ground point. Um, for the most part and uh, that's pretty much it for right now so let's put some power on this let me put you back on the stand bring this down here okay and there's not much to see well I'll put it here just in case there's smoke <laughs> but I don't think there will be um, I have my dim bulb in there so that should protect things so let's turn on and see and get this meter turned on all right, everything's here. I'll kind of dictate to you what I'm seeing on my meters here when I flip the switch. So I'm on limit, dim bulb, turn it on. Okay, the bulb flashed and now it dimmed down. I currently have about 360 volts um, of DC rail, which you know, on my B plus, so it's three, there it's dropping a little bit. Now it's down to 350. So my voltage is kind of low on this now of course I still have the bulb in here that'll kick up if I you know once we bypass that but I've got B plus I've got only 2.5 millivolts on this and I can use I can really the idle current on this should be somewhere in the 45 to 50 millivolt range is where I'd be happy with um, so I'm way low right now um, and again that's to be expected because I have the uh, bias turned way down and I have not too you know I have uh, the dim bulb in there uh, no output from the speakers uh, that I can see right now so that's good so there's no oscillation so let's start uh, I'm gonna get this little screwdriver here and I'm going to adjust the bias and let me move you up here to the there you can see all that in there there we go so right here is your B plus right here is your bias okay for your one of your tubes this is for a single tube and like I said one millivolt equals one milliamp so if we want to see somewhere in the 35 40 milliamp range we want this to be 35 to 40 millivolts and we're at 3 millivolts um, nothing on the output so as I crank this up, hopefully the amp won't start to oscillate on us. That's the wrong way, so let me go the other way. And I'm not going to come up all the way because I have the dim bulb in here yet. Alright, so, so I'm going to only go to about 20 millivolts. And you can see it's working pretty well. Let me move to the other tube so I can compare. Okay, here's bias on the other tube. And you can see they're within 2 millivolts of one another, so they're within 2 milliamps of one another. All right. Um, this one's the lower of the two tubes, so I'm going to go to the higher tube. And that also makes sense because when I, when I measured, with I used the four-wire measurement on these resistors, one of them was spot-on 1 ohm. The other one was 0.99 ohm, so it was off by a little bit. So again um, close enough so I've got my dim bulb it's not burning very bright but it is lit 
And let me see if you can see that. See the bulb right there? It's not super bright. On the camera, it's pretty bright. Okay. So there it is. Um, so I am now going to flip to full power. As you can see, I'm clear down to 300 volts through that uh, dim bulb, and it's the voltage will keep dropping as I increase the current because of the you know just the way it is. And of course, the phone is ringing. <laughs> well, as luck would have it, guys, um, that was a customer. And I have a little project I have to do right away for them because, you know, that's what has to come first. So uh, we at least saw that this thing powered up and we saw that the bias was adjustable. Um, it's only going to be a split second for you, but I probably will have to come back in a couple of hours. And at which point um, we're going to flip from the dim bulb to full power and see if the amp takes off and works. So uh, stick with me, and like I said, it'll be a few hours for me, but just a few seconds for you. Thanks a lot. Okay, where was I now? <laughs> so I'm back, and um, I've got the dummy load connected. Everything was working good on the dim bulb, so I'm going to turn this back on and give it a minute to warm up. All right, so get our power, and then we're going to, uh, now that we know that we have proper bias. Um, I have it set a little bit low and when we go to full power um, we should see the bias go up and we'll see what happens. Alright, as you can see bias is coming up little bit of heat on there. Since we don't have oscillation, um, or at least it doesn't look like there's anything oscillating right now, I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to leave the input terminal shorted here for the moment, and I'm going to go to full power now. Let's see what happens. So watch our voltage here and watch our bias current and see what happens. Okay. So it looks like we have 386 volts, which is still, you know, from the 450 that it should be, that voltage is low. And what that gives me the concern for is that possibly um, we may not get uh, enough drive out to the speaker. So we're not going to be able to get our full power to the speakers, I can tell you that right now. But let's uh, do a couple other little measurements. So right now we're looking at the B plus voltage. Uh, the next thing I want to do is kind of look at what we have on the plates of our uh, driver tubes here. And I'm going to start with the preamp tube. So let's uh, grab the probe here. And like I said, we're sitting at 30, 37 milliamps uh, of bias current, which is fine. I mean, you know, I'm not going to crank it up right now. Okay, so let's see. Here is one. So we have about 228 volts. That's good. I want it to be somewhere between 200 and 2, 230, something like that. So that's not bad. And the other input, 230. Okay, so that's good. Um, let me see here. Um, Okay, there's the other plate for the second, uh, the actual flip phase splitter tube. Okay, so our phase inverter on one end and phase inverter on the other end, 1.6 volts. That's the cathode. Um, all right, well, just for the heck of it, what is our bias voltage sitting at right now? Negative 39 volts. Okay. So it's not too bad. So everything's looking pretty decent right now. Let's see what we can do um, about putting a signal in here. I'm going to put my meter back on the B+. We're going to measure that 
383 and let me connect my and yes I'm being careful guys I know I get chastised from you a lot um, about wearing my watch which let me take my watch off because that's a good idea the ring never comes off guys sorry <laughs> uh, I don't think I've had this thing off but one or two times since I got married I, and that's been 20 21 years or whatever so um, all right let's connect up okay so let's see if we can get putting some signal in here if we get anything out I have the volume up just a little bit so let's put some drive into here nothing right now let me turn okay I have the volume down let me turn the volume up on the amp there we go wow that popped right up now didn't it okay there's your clipping and there's no clipping and I'm getting right about 10 let me see here right around 10 volts right at 10 volts starts clipping at 10 volts I mean like 9.97 so that's like 10 volts so let's do the math right Twenty five watts. So remember when we were first talking about all this, I told you that I was estimating this amp because of the reduced voltage to be somewhere in the twenty to between twenty and thirty watts or so. And we're right in there, it's twenty five watts. Now why is it twenty five watts? Um, you know, if you look at the design uh of the uh, what what I say AA eight sixty four fender amplifier which is what this thing's taken from okay a lot of the circuitry is similar well, that's a 50 50 to 55 watt circuit so why am I not getting that well the reason being is we have 383 volts okay and the the, the amp that you know the original fender had 450 okay so let's turn this amp off for a second and do a little bit of math and see what what I'm talking about if we have 388 volts okay uh, let's move this up a little bit I'm disconnecting the power cord sliding this up let me get a little note card here you guys like when I scribble don't you especially with my chicken scratch writing so let's say I'm going to show you my little uh, and again this is oversimplifying it okay so those of you who are into engineering and things don't expect me to be perfect I'm doing this to make it kind of understandable so let's say we have 380 volts okay and if you if you recall your transformer looks something like this on the primary and here's your secondary and this goes out to your speaker like that okay and I'm just gonna oversimplify this but I have a tube here and a tube here and I have a plate here and a plate here and I have a cathodes are tied together okay I'm just being really oversimplifying with this and this of course is your ground path right and if I put my B plus in here if it's equal to 380 volts okay uh, we're not gonna get into you know the the loss across the tube and all that but let's say that 80 percent of that okay and I'm being I'm being real generous here 80% of that is what we can apply from here to here, right? And from here to here. All right, so hold on. <laughs> Good grief. Okay, so 80% of 380. So if I take 380 
times 0 0.8 is 304 volts. Okay, so I have 304 volts up here, and I have 304 down here. Okay, so the potential from here to here then would be twice that, which would be 600. And 8 volts, right? Why? Why is that? It's because if I take the 304 and pass it this direction for the push, that makes this half of the waveform, right? So this is 304. Then when I turn this tube off, turn this tube on, my current path is through this coil and up. So now I have. 304 here, and from peak to peak, I'm going to have 608 volts, right? So 608, 304 times 2 equals 608. And if you, we recall, when we calculated this transformer, our turns ratio on the 4 ohm tap is 35.51, right? So, if I divide that by 35, I have about 17 volts getting out here, right? So, I have 17 volts. If I times that by itself, right, times 17.37, all right, ah. 17.37 times 17.37 is 301.8 and then we divide that by 4 ohms ah that's not right hold on okay I'm back so we have about 17.37 volts okay now remember we're talking peak to peak and of course when we read our wattage we always use the RMS volts to calculate watts. So if I have to take that 17 volts and I have to times it by 0.707 to get the RMS. So that equals 12.2. So 17.37 times 0.707 equals 12.28. Okay? So let's say 12.28. And then if I square that, and then I divide that by 4 ohm load, I get about 37 watts, okay? Theoretical. And if you noticed, right about the time we were getting some distortion, we were at about 25 watts. We were a little bit below that. And most likely because, really, we weren't getting that full... Uh, 80%. It was more like 70%, okay? Which is normal. That's how this works. Remember, you have losses across the tubes and everything um, that you have to account for, okay? But bottom line is, by reducing that voltage to the 380, it really makes a big difference here. If I added that other 70 volts there and got up to 450, okay? Let's just do the math on that. Okay, so now I have 450 times 80 percent, so, right, so that's 360, okay, then we times that by 2 because we have the push-pull is 720, okay, times our turns ratio, okay, or divided by the turns ratio of 35.5. I got 20.28, right, times 0.707, so you have 14.33, or 0.34, times 14.34 equals, divided by 4, and now you're at 51 watts, see that? Okay, so by having, the reason they're rating those amps at 50 watts and you just saw me do the math, is because 
if you use that impedance of transformer like what we have here and you you apply 450 volts across it you're going to get about 50 watts okay in in an ideal situation that wattage drops considerably and really those amps don't always put out a full 50 watts they're more like in the 40 to 45 range but you know um, they can theoretically do 50 watts you're really pushing these tubes though to do that so anyhow um, you can easily see how the voltage makes a big difference now what can we do to fix that well you can't do a whole lot um, you you got to deal with the cards that are dealt to you you got to play the hand that's dealt you if we come back to this and we play with these numbers for instance if I went to here I would really if I can if I lowered my voltage enough um, the turns ratio for the 8 ohm tap is lower okay which means um, the voltage coming out of it is going to be higher so theoretically let's say on the 8 ohm tap if I do let's go back here if I do the 608 all right divided by my 25 okay I have 24.32 coming out of here so I have 24.32 times 0.707 is 17.19 so that's 17.2 all right times 17.2 Okay, it's divided by four, because we're putting our four ohm speaker on here using this impedance, is 74 watts. And you can see that 74 watts would exceed the limit of these tubes. Now, what else could we do to play with this? Well, if I put a set of 6550 or KT88 tubes, I could probably drive them that hard and they would take it and the transformer would definitely take it because it's a hundred watt transformer I wouldn't be exceeding any of my ratings on anything um, but there's another problem with the KT88 slash 6550 and that is the bias voltage on those is much higher so you look at like you notice our bias voltage on this was 39 volt negative 39 volts on a KT88 or a 6550 your bias supply would have to be able to be up in the 75 to 80 volt range and this particular bias supply doesn't go that high so now you're messing around with your bias you see what a, <laughs> what a mess this turns out to be so long story short you're you're limited I mean obviously you have to have the bias current okay in the tubes but beyond that no matter how you bias these tubes as far as current is concerned how hard you're turning them on you are still capped by that maximum swing of voltage and by the turns ratio in your output tran this transformer is nothing but a step down transformer a lot of people get you know really nervous about looking at an output transformer they look at it like it's some kind of magic but it's really not it's literally a step down transformer you have a you know you have a high voltage input and you have a low voltage output what is your power supply transformer you know in a you know you, you go to Radio Shack and buy a 12 volt you know I know Radio Shack's not around anymore but you know what I mean go to the store and buy your 12 volt car stereo power supply you know it's got a little transformer in there and you know here's one here what do you have it's a step down you have 125 volts going in and 12 volts coming out you know it's a step down I mean this technically is similar to an output transformer so everything's about the turns ratio and again 
if I limit my voltage going into it, it can only have a maximum of that turns ratio of voltage coming out. Okay, the current is a byproduct of that. In other words, Ohm's law will dictate that as I increase the voltage across my load, it's going to draw more current. And therefore, it'll draw more current through these tubes. And that's why we worry about exceeding the current limit of the tubes, which is why we can't just go to this tap right here. Now, the other thing that you have to keep in mind is I'm doing everything with resistors, okay? With an 8 ohm or a 4 ohm load resistor. And that's great for just testing and running the numbers, but remember, a speaker is reactive. It has reactance. In other words, when somebody says a speaker is 4 ohms or a speaker is 8 ohms, it is a nominal 4 ohms or 8 ohms at a certain frequency under certain conditions, but also as you change the frequency that you apply across that speaker, you literally are going to change the reactance or you're going to change the impedance, you know, the, the what resistive value it sees at that moment in time, you're going to change that based on the frequency that you're applying across that speaker. The speaker is reactive. It's not DC resistive. It's not pure resistive. So, once again, <laughs> you know, these numbers can go all over the place based on what the impedance at any given frequency at any given time that speaker is presenting to the transformer. Does that make sense to you? So, what that means is this is a 25 watt amp. It's going to be a 25 watt amp. Now it's going to be a nice clean 25 watts. It's going to be able to deliver that with, without any distortion or any problems, which is great. What could I do to change that? Put a bigger power transformer in. If I wanted to crank this up to uh, you know, to 50 watts, I have to put a 450 volt power supply in there, which means the primary on this would have to be higher. The problem is, if you remember, we only had two power transformers to work with. One was too high, one was too low. I went with the too low one because, again, this is a practice amp. I don't care if it rips your head off. I don't need it that loud, okay? I just want an amp that performs well and that sounds good. And this is going to do it. But if you know if i put that other transformer in there that 400 volts when you run the numbers it's going to put out almost 560 volts so it's almost it's 100 volts too high for what this thing can handle the hardest you could push this circuit as it sits right now would be about 460 volts and that's why fender ran these at about 450 i mean that's that's it. You're railing the thing out. You're running the tube at its max when you got 450 volts on here, pretty much. And they're going to run real hot. <laughs> and they're going to wear out sooner um, when you run them like that. The, the other nice thing, though, is remember at the very beginning of my video series, I said I want to be able to use the 5881 tubes and the plain 6L6s, the non 6L6 GCs, just the straight 6L6s. Those tubes have a really mellow, nice sound to them, for bass especially. Um, I really like them. The problem is, they can't handle 450 volts on the plates. They're not designed for that, and they certainly don't have the current limit of these GCs. So, I can just as easily put, you know, I have some really nice Jan 6L6 WGBs, which are basically a knockoff of a 5881. I can put those in here. And they'd trim right up with the bias, and this amp would run perfect at that. And that might just be what I end up doing. Um, so we're going to play with this a little bit more, but at this point in time, um, the amp is working. And so our next stage is to start looking at the controls now. Does our tone control work? Does our does the presence control work? Or you know, I guessed at this. And I only had a 5K, I got a couple problems I'll tell you that I ran into on this. Um, I have a 5K pot for the uh, presence control. I really only wanted a 1K pot. So I put a shunt resistor across here so that when this amp, when this resistor is wide open, this pot's wide open, 
when you add it to this 1500 you're going to have you know a little over a thousand ohms about 1200 ohms so that gets my presence control where I want it the other issue these two pots were right the volume and the base the treble pot I did not have a 50k audio taper pot all I had was a 50k linear taper so my treble control is going to be a little wonky uh, it's probably going to get most of its adjustment in the first half of the rotation um, that's what the difference between um, do you all know what the difference is between an audio taper and a linear taper pot okay for those of you who don't uh, I'll just tell you a linear taper pot is just what it says it's linear as you rotate that the potentiometer the resistance increases in a linear manner so when the pots turned up halfway it's exactly half the resistance okay when it's three quarters of the way it's three quarters of the resistance of the whole pot a logarithmic taper pot <clears throat> or audio taper pot adjusts logarithmically meaning <clears throat> it it gets the first you know three quarters of the turn it has very little adjustment you're not at 50 percent and I, I don't have the logarithm numbers to tell you how much is at what but it it gives you more adjustment at the low end okay so it makes the pot it makes the treble control or the bass or the volume whatever you're adjusting it makes it more gentle to taper up if you use the linear taper pot for your volume for instance it would work but what would happen is you'd get the pot turned up just a little little bit and then it would get real touchy that there would be like a little section of that pot where it would make the greatest influence of of change um, whereas with a logarithmic or audio taper pot you it gives you the sensation of a nice smooth increase um, so hope that makes sense <laughs> to all of you so anyhow um, good news looks like uh, I don't know I mean it it worked right out of the box here and f for me that's pretty amazing usually smoke rolls the first time or the thing oscillates or it I get crazy hum or some kind of craziness goes on but as this one sets everything is good I don't see any issues and I think the, the things almost ready to connect it you know I'm gonna check the the pots make sure they work and I can't see why we can't hook up a speaker and see you know plug a bass into it and see what it sounds like at least see if it works if we get sound so let me do a couple more things and maybe that's where we'll end up okay in front of you you see a big speaker <laughs> and the amp is hooked up and it is making a lot of weird noises but it's picking up stuff from my uh, first of all I have the volume turned up but it's picking up a lot of stuff from the bench so this amps probably gonna be a good bit quieter than that although I'm pretty surprised how quiet it is as it sits but um, it works this thing on and actually play it but and of course it's shaking the whole bench and the speakers vibrating away but as you can hear it works so for a first test um, there's the treble the uh, deep switch big difference big difference with the deep switch so um and then the presence I have not tried yet there's the presence all the way I could probably put a little bit more feedback on this
Okay, so. And yes, it is a five string bass. Five string. So anyhow, everything worked good. A um, couple little things I might change around, but uh, for a first pass, that's pretty good. So uh, there's the amp. There's our first power up. <clears throat> Let me turn this down. And uh, I guess the next thing to do is uh, <clears throat> start building a cabinet and make a few more little uh, tweaks and adjustments on it. But I think we have ourselves a base amp. This thing's really loud, by the way. Um, so probably putting out a lot more than we were reading with the with the dummy load. Um, so, anyways, I think this uh, this video is getting long enough. I'm going to cut it right here and uh, get it posted and then we're going to start talking more about building a cabinet and you know doing some of the refinements to the amp but I'm pretty pleased with the first power up and everything uh, that this thing's actually working so alright uh, thank you for hanging with me on this so far and more to come later and uh, you all have a wonderful day I wish you all the best and uh, thank you for watching and subscribing and um, thumbs up if you think we, that I uh, did a good job for you. Take care.